Welcome to the I Work For Him podcast. I'm Todd T. Riley, producer of the I Work For Him radio program, the voice of the faith and work movement. Our mission is to transform the workplace of every Christian into a mission field. What does that look like in your workplace? Let's find out right now. This episode of I Work For Him was previously recorded for the Christian Leadership Alliance's Outcomes Conference podcast, where leaders come to invest the best of what they know into other leaders. Remember, if you have influence over just one person, you are a leader. Together, let's listen to this podcast and learn more about leading God's way. Enjoy. We have an incredible conversation today coming up with Jacinta Tegman, CEO with Krista. What do you hear about this? We'll be focusing on how she leads and strives to create a culture of belonging at Krista. Jacinta Tegman, welcome. Well, thank you. Just an honor and privilege to be together. Well, we are so glad to have you here. But before we actually start talking about your leadership role and your perspective on how God's using you to create a culture of belonging at Krista, tell us how you keep your faith strong and your leadership Christ-centered. Great. Yeah, well, I feel like we lead out of our relationship with the Lord, don't we? So I think for me, you know, if I want to be a great leader, I first of all have to be a great follower. And I think that's what really centers me is just trying to be a great follower of Jesus. So very intentional, you know, in spiritual disciplines, you know, sometimes I like to share something very exciting, (laughs) but I think for our faith journey, it's just like those principles that we know. We spend time with God in prayer. We spend time in his word. We spend time with fellowship with other believers who challenge us, encourage us, kind of call us out. Uh, when we're not uh, on the straight and narrow path of following Jesus. And I feel like those really basic things that we've known and heard all of our life really come to play when you are a leader, where um, you're kind of put up a little higher. So you're exposed. And who we are uh, in the private is who we need to be in the public space. And um, just try to keep that in mind. Um, that in, at the end of my term of leadership, that people will be more in love with Jesus, not less, mm. because of how I've led. Mm. Well, that's a good one. When mm. my term of leadership is done, that people will love Jesus more when I leave than when I came. That's, that's mm. a fantastic goal. I love that. You know, just into as a leader, what have been the keys to creating a culture of belonging at Krista? First of all, I would say it's like, what are we calling people to belong to? We have heard a lot. There's a lot of noise, um, you know, in the bigger spaces today about inclusivity and creating these cultures of belonging. But what are we calling people to belong to? And I think as a Christian organization, as a Christian leader, what I want to call people to is to be belong to the kingdom of God. And what are those principles that dictate, you know, how we behave, how we treat each other, how we act, and what we are calling people to. So trying to be really clear about what we're calling people to belong to, like, hey, you know, we're all members of country clubs or swim clubs or, you know, horse clubs, whatever, you name it. But what makes the kingdom of God different? So I think just being clear on that, And then the intentionality of choosing to see people as Jesus saw them, right? So creating that culture of whether you're, you know, uh, a Pharisee who Jesus reached out to or the woman at the well or anybody in between, that he was intentional in that call of calling people to himself. So I guess, you know, the central part of what we call people to is Jesus. And as we take a step closer to Jesus, uh, we are actually taking a step closer to each other. And when we try to elevate, you know, uh, having the perfect mix of attributes that are just external, you know, is that really motivating? But I always find like if we're helping people draw closer to Jesus, we actually, you know, by extension, draw closer to each other. And I think that's where real belonging um, really takes place. Mm. So to give us a little context for your leadership, I would love for you to explain a little bit about Krista and what it does, what it it stands for, and also maybe how many people you um, have in your organization. 
Sure. So Krista is the outflow of our founder's vision who started off with if young people who were being sent to reformatories in the late 1940s could just meet Jesus, their lives would be transformed. And along his journey, he added radio stations and senior living, a school, camping ministry, and uh, relief and development. So we have five kind of main sectors. But the core of all of it is helping people find and follow Jesus. Like we exist to see uh, those relationships develop. And we serve uh, our uh, headquarters are here in the Seattle, Washington area but our reach is global. So we serve over 3 million people a year, uh, both locally and internationally. And we have over 1,300 staff members that serve, you know, whether it's our schools, our camp and ministry, radio, international relief and development, or senior living, kind of the, the height and depth and breadth of all of God's kingdom mm. seems to be a part of who we are at Krista. And I think that main theme and that thread that binds all of these very diverse ministries together is that, you know, we feel like we're better together, that we leverage this incredible uh, legacy and history that we have, but our outward focus is all about uh, making and growing disciples. Wow. It could take a while to recover from that whole answer. Amazing (laughs) things that you guys are doing, but you're trying to create a culture of belonging. I mean, everything about an organization is the culture that's created, and, and you're the CEO over a cult, over a organization that is extraordinarily multifaceted. What are the challenges that you face in creating a culture of belonging? Yeah, well, again, it's uh, being clear of what we're asking people to belong to, and then when we're inviting people to join us, whether as a staff member or those we serve, it's making sure that we're intentional in that. We're making space at the table for everyone. So for that variety of viewpoints and backgrounds, and I think it's like when I when I go somewhere, whether it's a church, I look around and see, am I represented here somewhere? You know, can I see that this is a place where I could fit in, where I could belong? And so we're, we just try to call that out and be intentional in that welcoming uh, spirit that people feel like, yeah, this is my family. This is my home. I'm one of five kids, which uniquely prepared me (laughs) to lead this family of five ministries. And so we know that, you know, when you're in a big family, like I grew up in, you know, uh, there's different personalities, kind of different flavors, if you will. And the beauty of Kristen, our intentionality, what some of those things that we're trying to overcome is that every single one feels like, hey, this is my family. I belong here. I'm welcomed here. I'm honored here. My voice is listened to here, right? And through that, create that culture where not only do we have that internally, but we're also projecting that externally so that people who, you know, have curiosity about anything we're doing or want to be a part of it, they they can say like, I I can do that. I, I can be a part of this family, this open, welcoming, loving family that tries really hard to represent Jesus in all that we do, but also to see people as Jesus saw them with value and intrinsic work, uh, worth created in the image of God. And yeah, so it's kind of messy. It's just like, think of family. It's all that, right? <laughs> all that <laughs> and yet and really more. fun too. Yeah. We're talking to Jacinta Tegman today, the CEO of Krista. We're going to take a break and then we'll be right back with more with Jacinta Tegman. Do you want to make an impact for the kingdom of God without quitting your day job? Then here's some great news. God is calling you into full-time ministry right where you are. The job that you hold, the work that you do, and the people you work with, none of that is by accident. Your workplace is your mission field. Change the way you think about faith and work by picking up a copy of our new book, I Work For Him, by going to iworkforhim.com slash bookstore. And remember, you aren't just working for yourself, you're working for the Lord. Hey, welcome back as we talk today with Jacinta Tegman from Krista. Jacinta, what are the top two core principles that guide you daily as a Christian leader? Hmm. Well, I'd say, first of all, um, I am a servant of the Lord, right? So I, everything I do, try to make that an expression of who I am in Jesus and that I play to that audience of one and try to just always keep that really central. 
And then the second part then I would say is that I am a servant of the mission and the staff that I have the privilege of leading here. So I think it's too focused, right? Always keeping Jesus in that top uh, position. And then that I see myself as a servant to what God has called this organization to be. And by extension, then again, of those he's called to serve here. And I think keeping those two things in focus really helped me, you know, kind of center me that it's not an ego thing. It's not about, you know, a career uh, step for me or uh, an achievement, if anything. But I think if I do those two things well, ultimately all those other things that um, really matter kind of fall in the correct order. So what about the days when those top two core principles are being challenged heavily by the enemy yeah. or somebody or people or, or whatever. How, what do you do yeah. then? What do you have, what do you have built into your system to make sure that you get back to those core principles? Yeah. Well, I mean, well maybe you never yeah. have those days. Maybe you never have those days. I have those days all the time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just like every other leader. Right. And some of it's not just what's happening externally, but even internally, like our own fears and our own securities are like, I have no idea how to react or respond to all the crazy that we've experienced in the last couple of years. So first of all, I would just say, you know, I, I uh, kind of keep that all in balance by my own schedule. So I'm an early riser and I feel like I could probably count on one hand the times that I haven't made time in my schedule to put Jesus first, to spend time with him and his word. And, you know, when you're younger and I was probably more of a doer in those days, but the older I've gotten, I realized it's not a doer. It's a beer. <laughs> like I need to be with Jesus. I need to be full of him and his presence in my life. And then sort of miraculously, uh, all those other things kind of come into play. So I'd say that's that's how I stay centered. And, you know, when you've heard this before, right, when people say the busier I, I am, the more I need to take time to pray, the more I need time to that. And I'd say at this level of leadership and everything that I'm facing and all the things I don't even know I'm facing yet, but surely are coming. That is the thing that really kind of keeps me focused and grounded. And I, I, I just don't think there's any other way around it. And then the second part is how I lead the staff and that we're very much mission driven. So again, a lot of competing things and we have to look at everything through the filter of our mission. Is it going to get us closer to that or is it going to pull us away? And I think, you know, reciting it, saying it, focusing on it, reminding, inspiring, you know, kind of leading through that mission statement helps keep that central as well. Like there's lots of great organizations, a lot of great things that we could do, but we believe this is what God has called us to be, you know, through our mission and, you know, just staying anchored to it. Again, I would say nothing super, you know, uh, uh, innovative in this. It's just the basics. It's the fundamentals of being right with God and then right in our mission. Uh, and that kind of keeps us there in that space. You know, so I want to ask you about your path in, of leadership. So rising to the level of CEO of a major international ministry, you have, ha have to have had obstacles or spiritual battles along the way. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? What kinds of things have you experienced and how has God brought you through that? I think for me, the big one there is just being really comfortable in who God made me. So early on again, you know, as I was feeling this call to ministry or something that the Lord had put a calling on my life. I kind of looked around at other examples and thought, oh, I would need to be this way or that way. Um, my husband and I did pastoral ministry. And I remember looking at other pastors' wives and thinking like, okay, how do I make better cookies? How, you know? And I spent a lot of time trying to be other people and, of course, was frustrating myself and others. And then at some point on this journey, realized, God, you care about people more than I possibly can. And you have made me this way. I'm going to lean into those giftings and kind of let all those other expectations go to the side. So I would say for me, it's mostly about how I perceive myself and how I try to be other people instead of saying, well, Lord, I may not understand it, 
But I think you do the best job of putting people in the right place with the right gift mix. I can lean into that. So, you know, it isn't like there haven't been external challenges, but I would say for me, it was the internal challenge Mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of doing that uh, assessment of who I am, who God called me to be, and just to press into that, try to do that well and kind of leave the other external things out there and not not focus so much on those. Wow. When we come back, I'd love to talk to you about how listening and learning have played a, a role in your re- leadership, not only at Krista, but in your life, uh, in your career, because those are two key things that leaders really need to work on. This is we talk with Jacinta Tegman, and we'll be right back. You know the kind of person that always tells you about the latest trends or the special deals around town? Well, lean in, because here's a message from that kind of person. The Awaken Podcast Network is the place to be. Go to awakenpodcastnetwork.com and unlock God's purpose for your work with help from some friends. You will find a gathering place of podcasts that provide simple tools, faith stories, and conversations that will inspire and equip you to vibrantly live out your faith in your work today. Go ahead, check out awakenpodcastnetwork.com and then be that kind of person and tell a friend. Hey, welcome back as we talk with Jacinta Tegman from Krista. Jacinta, I I promised that I'd ask this question. Listening and learning, two key principles that have to be built into every leader. First off, how does listening play a part in your growth as a leader? I would say, you know, sometimes I look at my leadership and I just quite honestly would say, I'm not sure I'm a great leader, but I can tell you, I try to be a great follower, a great follower from of the Lord. And so first off, you know, in order to follow Jesus, you have to hear his voice. You have to listen to him. You have to make that a part of your life. So a big part of what I do in leadership is try to hear from God through prayer, through reading his word. I journal. Uh, as I'm uh, reading through the Bible, like, you know, when I read a passage, what is the Lord telling me through this passage as an example? And I write it down because I don't know about you guys, but five minutes later, I like something really ma- magical happened and I can't remember what it was. So I write it down and reflect on it. Right. So I really try to hear, you know, I, I look at the events that were seen unfold us in, in, in front of us in the world. And I, I ask, Lord, what are you saying? What are you doing? And kind of have that, I, uh, that uh, posture, if you will, of listening to God, you know, in the big things like the macro level of what God is doing in the world, what he's speaking to me in, through his word and through the circumstances. And then the second piece is just making sure that I'm listening to both those I I work with, lead with, and those we serve. And for me, that's having that connection. So, you know, my office, when I became the uh, CEO of Krista, was kind of tucked away in a corner. And I thought, nobody's going to come walk the gauntlet back here to talk to me. And how will I even know what's going on? So try to be, I move my office to sort of in a practical uh, way to be close to where I'm in the hub, where people walk by, they'll stop in and chat. And I always think, you know, when I'm talking, I'm genuinely, you know, teaching or trying to convey something. But when I'm listening, I'm learning and I want to be a learner. And so I need to be able to be in proximity to people to actually hear from them and through that, learn what's on their hearts, whether they're aligned or not, whether they have a brilliant idea or they're going down the wrong path, whatever the circumstances may be. I think it's proximity to those I work with and those I serve to just know what's on their hearts and those two facets. So you're saying you gave up the corner office with windows overlooking the lake so you could be (laughs) in the center where people could come and have access to you as the leader. That's right. right. And how I need did to that, hear from them. And how did that change the culture at Krista? I think it may, meant that people would drop by and see me. And I think it, it changed the culture because I was accessible. And also, I knew what was going on. I wasn't removed. And so I think it's helped me to adapt as I think of the needs that are ongoing, right? But also, it's helped me to have my ear 
to the ground, if you will, and that my finger on the pulse of what's the heartbeat of our organization and trying to be in the center of that and what God is doing. You know, in my mind, I keep playing with this idea of the family with five kids and you, you know, trying to keep your, your finger as a mom on what's going on with all of those kids. You can't be hiding in the laundry room as much as maybe you want to. Were, were you, you know? one of five kids or do you have five kids? One of five kids. Okay. She's one, but, one but in the five. organization, it's like okay. she has right. five okay. kids. I'm just playing oh, this yeah. out in okay. my head. Yeah. And so with that in mind, you know, I, I, I don't want, you know, as moms, we don't want to pick favorites or anything, but let's talk about something within Krista that you are very enthusiastic about, whether it's the overall mission and impact or one specific thing that is happening within Krista that, you know, you're just really excited about how God is moving in that area. Thank you. Well, yeah, all of my kids are special. And I remember <laughs> when I had my second child, I thought, how could I love mm-hmm. anyone as much as I love that first child? And when the second one was born, it wasn't that I loved that first one less. It's that God expanded my ability to love. And I think when you have ministries like Krista, that's what has to happen. Your heart expands to mm-hmm. fit, you know, the biggest need. But I think for me, You know, we're a legacy organization. We're coming up on our 75th anniversary. And, you know, it's easy during those 75 years to get some mission drift that can happen in any organization. Uh, Good intent maybe kind of falls off a little bit of our direction. And so one of the things I'm most excited about is that we're just returning to our first love of God and returning to our mission to see new and growing disciples. So the other day I heard a story of 30 uh, students in our high school came to faith in Christ. Mm. Some, you know, for the first time commitment. And I'm thinking that's exactly why this ministry was started. And in each facet of our ministry, I could uh, share stories of that. But I think what's exciting is that, you know, coming back to our roots, our mission of why we were founded and seeing that Seeing new and growing disciples is as relevant today and is needed today as it was 75 years ago, maybe even more so, right? As things continue to, you know, get darker in our world, I feel like the Lord has allowed Krista to be this light on a hill to lead people to Christ. So super excited about those things. All right. As we close out the podcast today, Jacinta, what leadership idea or thinking would you like to share as an investment of those listening today? One thing that God has really placed on my heart as we look at all the circumstances in the world around us, and you guys will love this, as a woman in leadership, I hear a lot of people tell sports analogies. Well, whenever I want to quiet a room, I give a birth analogy. <laughs> so here it comes. You know, in Romans, it talks about how the world is groaning as we're waiting, as if in labor, as in childbirth uh, pains, you know, as we're waiting for the second return of our Lord. And one thing I know as a subject matter expert, having three children myself, when labor starts, intensity and frequency increases with those labor pains, right? So, you know, at first you can handle that first pain, but by, you know, an hour, two, five hours, 10 hours into labor, boy, those are right on top of each other. I see that happening in the world. And I think as the return of our Lord uh, comes more into focus through all the pain uh, all the childbirth pains that we as a global world is, are now experiencing. My, my comment to the leaders that will be attending is we need to look up. Our focus has to be absolutely on Jesus and his imminent return and that we have this moment to make a difference, a difference that will last through eternity. And that would be my encouragement, encouragement that those labor pains that we're feeling mean that Jesus is returning soon. Mm. Come quickly. Come Come quickly. Maranatha. (laughs) That's right. Jacinta Mm -hmm. Tegman, thank you so much for being on. My pleasure. God bless you. Did you know that God has a calling on your life? It's true. He's called you to bring Jesus to the world. For some, that may look like a pulpit or a foreign mission field. But for most of us, it looks like a construction site, a cubicle, a hospital, or a classroom. Wherever it is that you work, live, volunteer, and invest, that is your mission field. To learn more about integrating your faith into your work and retirement, check out our books, I Work For Him, She Works For Him, and I Retire For Him by going to iworkforhim.com slash bookstore. 
Thanks for listening to the I Work For Him podcast with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Please visit iworkforhim.com to learn more about connecting your faith and work, to join the I Work For Him nation, or subscribe to our weekly blog. You can also follow us on social media at I Work For Him to stay up to date and meet our guests. If today's message spoke to you, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your review will launch more workplace missionaries across America. That's at I Work For Him and online at iworkforhim.com. I work, the number four, him.com. <laughs>